Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I have with me one of my most popular guests of all time. I'm so excited to have her back here, and I know that you guys are so excited to have her here. She is. She had only been in the industry for three years back then, but now she has definitely cemented herself as a superstar in the adult industry, and I'm so happy to have her here, the beautiful Elsa Jean. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm so happy to be back. Is my microphone okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to have you back too. Also, like, <laughs> I I also am very happy to have you back with like our new improved cameras. When I had you on before, we were on a much lower resolution camera, and really, I go back and I like look at those old clips, and I'm just like, oh, like. But they probably of, didn't have better we, cameras, or maybe they no, did. they did just. Ernie didn't have better cameras, but it's okay. Oh, We've grown okay. together. We've all grown <laughs> together, and now we are working with much better equipment. So now everybody can see you, like your beautiful face in high def. Yay! I can see also that you're getting you're getting rid yeah. of that tattoo on your shoulder. <laughs> yes. Wow, dude, how I, painful is that? It's so painful because that so, that was very big and very dark. So this is actually only one treatment, which is pretty cool because it's really? almost you have one treatment. So wow. I went to a place that they have the best of the best, but it is the most painful. They don't use heat, mm -hmm. so you don't get like blistery, but mm -hmm. it does. Oh my gosh, it's so painful. I I have so many that I'm removing. It's just wow. For those of like, you who are not actually watching the video and you're listening to the audio, we are talking about tattoos. Yes. Elsa has a huge rose tattoo on her shoulder that's very this, much been like yes. a trademark of yours. And this one will probably only take two more sessions. The one on my hip will take three years. What's on your one, hip? I can't remember. Roses again. Oh. <laughs> I mean, at least you're stupid. consistent. <laughs> so stupid what how long did that session take just a couple minutes they zap it so quick really yeah but just excruciating pain for a couple of minutes it's like a rubber band but like a big rubber band yeah like a strong one plus burning and like i i don't even know how to explain it it's like a true zap in yeah like, no and, i've had uh, enough laser treatments in my yeah. old age to understand what you mean and you can't numb it and that you got to leave it alone it's just can you take like a painkiller beforehand? I'm sure, but I don't know. I don't even take Tylenol, so I'm not really? really. Yeah. Why don't you take Tylenol? I just don't like taking medication. Interesting. You yeah. know, my brother used to be like that. He would get sick and he would like not take medication because he wanted to know that like he could fight it on his own. I just think it's better to. So I've had two boob jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And. My second one, I wasn't even swollen or anything, and all I took was the antibiotics because you have to take that. Yeah. But I swear it's because I didn't take any added stuff. I just drank arnica tea, which I drink every single day, and I think that's like in celery juice. I think that's like the best thing you can really do instead of taking Tylenols and. What you got two boob jobs and you never took any pain medication? No, the first from them? one it was horrible, but I did recover a lot quicker than my friend did, and my second one. No pain, no swelling, no bruising. And I'm trying to tell people, drink Arnica tea. Really? If you're getting a procedure done, start drinking Arnica tea two weeks prior. 30 days prior, drink celery juice. Really? Mm -hmm. It helps for inflammation. And you know Arnica, like the oh, yeah. cream and stuff? They yeah. have a tea. I fell on my ass on the stairs last week. I've been drink putting the Arnica tea. on my but every fucking day since then. Yeah, the tea, way better. Arnica tea and then, cel you know, celery juice, I hate celery, but mm -hmm. I know that celery juice is good for digestion, so I've been so trying many, to drink more of that. It, like, if you really do your research on celery juice, it helps with so much. Really? Yeah. It tastes like, yeah, it's not. You could put lemon in it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like, yeah. I mean, you know, I used to be like a raging alcoholic, so I'm good at pounding really? liquids really quickly. Oh wow! So I feel like <laughs> if I could pound like a fucking glass of vodka, which is vile, I feel like I could do just. I don't juice. know. I could I could do shots all day if I really wanted to, and it, and I like it way better than celery juice. Well, I mean, it makes you feel better, right? It's yeah. like after the first couple, it's like ah, oh, it's. A, it's water after that. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, yeah. Celery juice. Okay. I'm going to start doing try I need it. to get more healthy. I'm going to start looking into that. Yeah. No, try try celery juice. It's... You say, like, anti-inflammatory, too? Just, I mean, everything. I drink it when I have a headache. All of it. If I'm not feeling good, I drink celery juice. Really? I, have a, I actually have a juice in the fridge with celery juice. In Try it. it. And like beets. And, just do oh, natural. I hate beets. The two things I hate the most, celery and beets, are you're telling me other things I need to 
Well, I mean, I feel like the last year I used to eat so unhealthy and it really, people would tell me this all the time, it makes a huge difference when you're healthy. I know. Just everyday functioning is so much easier. Why won't I do it? Wait, what else do I need to do? Just eat, don't eat processed things. I don't eat anything on like, that's been processed, like no crackers, no man-made type of you know things that well, are they just say not... they say like stay to the on the outside aisles of the grocery right mm-hmm. because that's where like the dairy is and well dairy is probably not a good example but like the vegetables and the yeah. fruits and stuff like that like caveman diet yeah everything on the inside is the process that's stuff. what i do caveman diet it's so tell, like, take me through what you generally eat in a day. I know this is not a nutritious podcast. We will get to dicks, I swear to God, guys. Yeah. But like, I do want to hear. I want to hear about how I can be healthier so I can take dick better. Okay. So drink Arnica <laughs> tea because then when you're swollen, it will just you won't be so swollen and you won't be in pain. Drink that celery juice. But I wake up and I drink Arnica tea. I'll eat. I actually don't eat breakfast. If I do, mm-hmm. it will be like eggs like two eggs I'm Mm -hmm. not a breakfast person I actually don't really eat until one o'clock and then that's when I'll eat grilled chicken broccoli um fruits how do you like so I mean you I know you travel a lot you travel quite a bit like how do you manage eating stuff that's not man-made when you're traveling every place has grilled chicken and broccoli even if it's not on it you call room service and you ask for that they'll make it or some type of vegetable but they all have grilled chicken mm, I guess and then that's true. yeah I guess that's true. and they'll all make like some type of gravy or whatever i guess but i don't even eat that it's in rice yeah and then what what about dinner same thing are you serious steak Do- shrimp salmon and then a vegetable, whether it's a spinach, salmon and spinach goes well together. Do you mashed ever eat, potato? Do you eat sugar ever? No. Like, See, I it? have PCOS actually, so sugar is oh. really bad for me. Hmm. So bad. I actually have to be kind of careful of the amount of fruit that I eat too. Like it oh, will really? really throw me off. Yeah. Okay. I know. But I love sugar. Sugar is my problem. That's that's like if I could kick the sugar habit, I, I feel like. I would would solve a lot of issues in my life. They say 21 days forms a habit. So if you could get past 21 days of no sugar, I bet you you won't even notice it. And it's true. I know. I got rid of all sodas and stuff. Now I have them in my fridge for my friends, but I actually don't touch them. Before I would have just drank the whole thing. Yeah, I'm not a big soda person, but like it's at night. I like to, you know, when I'm relaxing, I like to eat like some chocolate or something. I think you should just keep doing that. There's chocolate's actually... Dark chocolate, but I, see, it's not dark chocolate. Oh. I don't like dark chocolate. <laughs> you're trying to give me, you're trying to like give me an out with yeah, the healthy I know. chocolate. Yeah, I'm trying to validate. Not gonna, not gonna work. Yeah, you know what though? I think it's so funny because I'm shooting. I'm actually shooting Nicole Aniston next week, and you know, like she's super healthy and she's yeah. vegan and all that stuff. And every time I'm with her, she like inspires me to do better. So I feel like maybe you. Just book end, being bookended it. by you and then Nicole next week is going to make me a better person. Yeah, just try it. It's really not that bad. It's really I know. not. I know. Eating healthy actually tastes good. I do normally eat healthy. It is it is honestly the sugar thing. That's so you'll problem. eat a whole bar of chocolate? Um, get or a me, few? You know, not a whole, like half. I don't know. It depends. Well, I don't think that that's that bad. You were making it seem like you eat a full tub of ice cream plus a chocolate. No, 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 no. I'm not that bad. But, um, you know, like it's still too much. And I also drink too much caffeine. Oh, yeah. See, I'm, I no. drink a lot of caffeine. Yeah. Okay. So you, you are, you are I, imperfect in some ways. Definitely. You're not, okay, definitely good, when it comes to caffeine. And I smoke a lot of weed. Oh, okay. A lot. Like I will smoke probably three joints in the morning. And then, really? Yes. And that doesn't give you the munchies? <laughs> no. See, when I would smoke pot, like it would literally make my stomach numb where I could eat an insane amount of food. It was like I would be eating all of this food and be like, how am I consuming all of this? Like, how is it fitting inside me? It was like, that was really bad. I mean, I've done that. Eating. I just never, I always regret it. Yeah. My stomach will, Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. It's over for days if I were to do something like that. Maybe even weeks, honestly. Yeah, but I'm, I'm like one of those people that just, like I know that I'm setting myself up for failure. Yeah. And I still do it. 
just, I don't know. Maybe you bad, need bad like. <laughs> this is why I had to stop drinking alcohol because I literally yeah. like, couldn't. That lack you know? of, of yeah. a boundary. Yeah, That's I also right. don't Everyone smoke. has. I that. also don't smoke weed anymore. I don't do any of that stuff. Yeah, sugar is my next. Well, my it's next sugar's just everyone eats so much sugar. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's, you're acting okay. like you're smoking math at night or something. Like. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I guess it's not that bad. Okay, now that we've spent the first 12 minutes of the podcast talking about how I need to change my nutritional habits, let's talk about you. Okay. Um, so you have a massive following. Um, your interview is – did you know that your interview is actually my most watched interview I didn't on know your most, channel? but yeah. I knew it was up there for sure. No, it's 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 – the number one. It's actually funny just because the story. Julia <laughs> Ann was right in before you, and you and her have the two top slots. Oh, oh and Nicole Aniston, too, actually, who I'm seeing next week. So weird. Like the three nice. of you. It's interesting. It's just, it's Full circle. Me. But I'm pretty sure yours is um, number one. Nice. And it's had like at least two million views. I, it's just that story. I, st- I still hear story. people, or they'll comment and stuff. They'll be like, I saw you on Holly Randall's podcast. And, you know, they always bring it up. People love that story <laughs> I know. so much. Um, so how have you adjusted to your years of fame in the industry? I mean, you've really blown up. Really? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> you must I, on I, some level know... Can I be honest with yes, you? I live such a different life than what I... But people truly think I live that mm-hmm. I'm really not in touch with... I don't want to say reality, but almost. Like, I really live by myself. I when I'm on social media, I'm not looking at people's stuff. I'm looking at like memes and mm-hmm. funny videos. I make a uh, everyone on my Twitter that's in the industry is honestly muted. I don't see anything that Yeah, I just don't see anything. So no, I don't I don't even look at my comments on my social media. That I think is the key to happiness. Yes. It really is. Is not reading the comments. So I see that my following goes up, but I don't know. I never really like thought about it. Do you get recognized in public? Yeah. So that's some indication that you... Yeah, but that happened when I was super new. Hmm. But doesn't doesn't it happen more often now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How do you yeah. handle that, by the way? Like, and Depends. is there... If a fan would see you in public, is there a cool way to approach you? Like, what would you say would be the guidelines that would make I you mean, respond favorably? Most of the time, it's people are just being kind. Like, that's all I really ask for is people just to say hi or you know um I haven't had any bad situations you're laughing Uh, (laughs) as you say that which makes me think that you have had at least one I was just uh I was at a club I'm not really a club person but I was Mm -hmm. at a club and I was with someone I probably shouldn't have been around just because it didn't I don't know like we our lifestyles didn't really match up and the guy (laughs) came up to us and he was like wow I can't believe you two are together and we were like together together at that point he's like I'm not gonna tell your little dirty secret <laughs> and they got in, the guy I was seeing and him got into a fist fight over it wow so that's something that you shouldn't do is yeah like, use a threatening tone yeah because I mean I'm assuming <laughs> dirty little secret he meant that you were an adult star and the, the person wasn't yeah and obviously the person that you're with like does Did, know that or right do, and doesn't with, care but yeah, like, still the person I feel like just, that would have come up yeah, for sure. That would be crazy if it didn't. But yeah, yeah the guy was like, "Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell your little secret or dirty secret." Was, and his eyes were dilated because he was on like coke or something. Yeah, I was just course. like, "This is scary." Oh my god, <laughs> how how is like dating just in general been for you? Is it is it difficult? Um, no, no. Okay. I've had, <laughs> I've had actually like a good. I've only had a few boyfriends. I've only mm-hmm. had like three real ones, mm-hmm. I guess. But I've always dated around, and it my job has never been a problem. Sometimes it it's turned to be a problem later because I get so territorial. Yeah. Um, but with my ex, a few years ago, I just lied to him and told him I wasn't shooting when I really was, and he and that my look has always kind of kept the same, especially back then. Yeah. So, I just. He, he soon saw like new stuff coming out, but we were already done before then. Because I would never like not. I I've never I don't, a guy can never affect my job. Like I, it's that would be yeah too much. That would be so embarrassing if I mm. did porn and then I let a guy tell me I can't. 
Would, but that happens but all the time. Absolutely. I never want to be like that. Mm. It happens all, like it happens with two industry people will start saying you can't. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's people the will truth. Be dating other people in porn and then that person in porn will stop them from doing yes. porn. Yes. It's crazy. It is a little bit. I mean, everybody's got their I don't know, everyone's got their thing, you know what yeah. I mean? It's hard to it's hard to say how you should conduct your relationship, but I guess one can tell. I think it's by... silly. <laughs> I think it's so silly. But I'm I like to be very independent. But dating has not been difficult. Yeah. I've dated some really cool people actually. Yeah. Yeah. So Every kind. you but you are retired from like what we call mainstream porn, yeah. which is like shooting for brands. So what made you decide to go stop going that route? Um, honestly, it was I felt like my health was at risk. Mm. Um, I worked for a company and they lied to me about testing and I ended up getting a treatable STD, but it still traumatized me so much that I was lied to. And I decided I was like, I have to read like if I felt like that was like a real warning for me for my mental health and my physical health, because yeah. I mean, let's be honest, it does happen. Right. Yeah. People get STDs. But I wanted 24 hour tests from people and they lied to me. Oh. And it really I was like, I can't believe you guys. I, would, I was doing a gangbang. Mm -hmm. So I was already out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I said. The only thing I really want is for people, you know how gangbangs are. I mean, there's so many people. You There's such a higher chance at getting something. So there's I said, a gang of people. Yes, there's a <laughs> gang of people. So I was like, everyone has to be on a 24-hour test. And I get there on set. They're moving things. It was so suspicious. Even the makeup artist that day was like, something doesn't feel right. So I'm talking to all the talent. I'm like, everyone got their test back this morning, right? Talking to the director, everything. Yes, yes, yes. And then I go and I shoot the scene immediately after. I'm like, man, I don't feel good. My throat was immediately white and like like disgusting and this is just shortly after later that night my glands are swollen like this and finally the owner or whatever the company calls me and they're like yeah because I'm texting them, I'm like I think I'm like really sick and um they tried to gaslight me and tell me that it was probably from like <laughs> someone I was seeing or you know whatever and then they I, they finally said well actually so and so was dirty we thought you were going to be okay, um, and we didn't think it was going to affect you. So wait, they knew. Wait, 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 wait. They knew the person was dirty, or they knew the person didn't have a 24-hour test? Honestly, I, for the way it sounded to me was that they knew they were dirty. And they it came back that morning knowing they were dirty, and they tried to gaslight me to think that I did something wrong, and that, yeah, no, it was whoa yeah whoa that like that is so against what the industry that is does. so fucking unethical that's like yeah. insane like so i mean i have a policy and actually this was instituted by mind geek that if i don't have a cleared test from the person the day before mm -hmm. i cancel them and get somebody yeah. else because it doesn't matter. Like, I need the results back yeah. the day before. Because sometimes people will go get tested mm -hmm. the day before. They're like, oh, my results will be in the next morning for the shoot. I'm like, yeah. that's not that's not acceptable. Your test results have to be clean and within the window to the day before. Because if I wait until the morning of, first of all, your test results might not come in on time. Yeah. Second of all, they might come in dirty. Yeah. Or, you know, and we're definitely not shooting the scene until I see cleared test results but what's even easier is that it was a gangbang so if the person came back dirty they could have just said every that person's just gone it's I mean there was there was multiple people it's not like we were short people yeah 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 and they said that the the the, the scene was too expensive the I mean the money How that they put was it? it was four okay so I guess I could have done a three but you know what the scene never it will never come out because of what has happened they said they won't release it which I think legally they're they're scared honestly yeah of course so they, it's not even like the scenes so they lost the money completely yeah when they could have just rescheduled it or yeah. dropped the person it right. was that simple that's crazy so I I'm, retired over that literally wow yeah. I'm really sorry that happened to you that's it's like that's 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 horrifying to me. Honestly, it was a blessing in disguise because I. Do you I feel mean, like you were maybe ready? So ready. Okay. So ready. Because that was like a scene where I was like, I'm going to start doing like more and more aggressive and then I'm done. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I, I was ready to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. That is rough.
<laughs> so um, since then, you're just you've just been well. I know we, we'll talk in a minute what you're up to now, but mm -hmm. so after that happened, I mean, you had OnlyFans, right? So you I just did. Had that to support you, which I'm sure has probably been pretty lucrative for you. It's been yeah. lucrative for a lot of people. So what did you do like after? that retirement like did you kind of step back was there like self-care that you yeah. felt you needed to do I mean for a year straight I just drank celery juice drinks no <laughs> I went so hard because I started so young and I worked so often that I never <clears throat> actually really had a life when I was in the industry and I mm. always was either married or like with like an older guy that I was at home doing nothing. So when I finally retired, I actually went really crazy and had the best time of my life. Just went out and just like I did. And just yes. Like, and I was fun. single too. And it was, it was a lot of fun. So I, I felt really recovered and ready to work a year later. Yeah. Yeah. So then a year later, um, what did, what did, what did you start doing? I just, um, Honestly, a year later, I just started to do, you know, just more mainstream podcasts. And um, I started to get into NFTs. I I was almost like a stay-at-home wife for a little bit. And, like, I really was enjoying life. And mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, so I really started with the NFTs. That's kind of what brought me back a little bit. Okay. And then really focusing on the content on my OnlyFans because, I mean, I had so much time. I traveled and... Um, but the NFTs was like, I had to learn a lot actually yeah. to do it. Like yeah. I, I wasn't just like someone that put out, you know, some and then didn't do anything. Like I created my own website and everything to sell them. And so you didn't like just put out some NFTs and then, and then like not, not fulfill your obligations. Yes, absolutely. And, like, money and then yeah. Like yeah, no, I didn't do that. And I had to actually make a huge point that I wasn't going to do that. So I had to do double work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to get into your NFTs. So let's take a quick commercial break. Then let's come back. Let's talk about Elsa's NFTs. And we'll talk about the podcast. So we'll be right back, guys. With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, plus enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. All right, guys, we are back. Okay, so Elsa, so yeah, talk to me about your your NFT project. So my friends for a while were actually trying to get me to do it, and I was like, I don't want to do added work. You mm -hmm. know, we were talking earlier about how the, like, so many subscription platforms, like, it's, yeah. and they all want different content on there. Or yeah. They, you know, it's almost impossible sometimes. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to do this added work. And then I wasn't working, and that, you know, so... Uh, my friends, I jumped on a little bit too late, I feel, but I also think I did it at the right time because um, I didn't have anything else to really do. So I purposely wanted to give my fans something that, you know, like they can buy customs, but then it's kind of like whatever and, you know, it will either get stolen or, you know, put up on tube sites. But I was like, I want to give them something that I think can hold value if they want to resell it. So they buy these NFTs and then they get like, you know, exclusive content, voice notes. Um, uh, they honestly get like first out of everything. Like I have, um, you know, some, some clothing and stuff that I am coming out with. I'm going to release it to them first. Mm -hmm. But if they don't like what I have on there, they could sell their NFT back mm -hmm. and get their money back. Mm -hmm. So, so what are what are the NFTs specifically? They're all variations of different stuff. You can even okay. get golden tickets where um, if you get one, um, 
you can get a free FaceTime call with me mm -hmm. or a, a Skype or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So they're all just different looks and they, it's at random mm -hmm. which one you get. But So are they, um, because I understand that like NFTs in are really like kinds of member, special like membership yeah. tokens really where yes. people can access bonus stuff like you're talking yes. about. But your NFTs specifically, because you know, they've sometimes they're cartoons. Yeah, no, they're, so they're cartoons. They're, they're cartoons yeah. of you. Okay. Yeah, cartoon, very girly, mm -hmm. uh, very similar to me. So yeah. yeah, I went with more of a cartoon look. How many variations are there? I think there's a thousand. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah so there's quite a few. So did you get to choose what each variation was or at least I mean because I know a lot of times with a thousand especially yeah. it's like maybe you swap out the hair hat color change, with the hat yeah. with the shoe and etc but you know there's got to be some basic designs that you work yeah with. You so I, I yeah I worked with a guy on just the basic ones mm -hmm. and um and they actually took a lot of it from my Instagram the looks and stuff like mm -hmm. that so some of them are are kind of similar to photos where they kind of just drew up and and then like we said changed you know mm -hmm the shoes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, you were featured in a Business Insider article um, that said you made 30K in one month. Was mm -hmm. that surprising to you? Was it more? Was it less than you expected? And it, it was surprising because I did a smaller drop. So mm -hmm. I wanted, um, yeah, so I, I it was surprising because I didn't necessarily think people were still buying NFTs, but then I kind of thought about it. I was like, I actually really do have hardcore fans that no matter what I do, I know that they'll like support. So it makes sense a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's an interesting time to get into the NFT market, right? It is. Because the bubble has popped mm -hmm. um, and all of those useless NFTs and all of those rug pulls have yeah. been exposed. So, but, but however, there is still, there's still like a core group of people that really believe in NFTs and feel like it's going to come yeah. back around and, and believe in the project. So yeah, it's kind of like, I feel that if you're successful in that market at this time, then you're really, you know, providing value mm -hmm. and you have customers who recognize that and trust you really. I think if you have like a hardcore fan base your nfts will always be like something that people want to buy i think mm -hmm. it's people buying these random ones that mm -hmm. are like you know whatever that they were just like some type of weird character that no one there was no like substance to it you right. know so so i feel like mine will always be popular yeah i really do i think any girl in the industry anyone with a fan base their nfts will always do good as long, yeah, and I think as long as they are providing the value for that, right? Because mm -hmm. that's, I think that that's where the problem lies. Because right. a lot of people don't necessarily understand what NFTs are, and they think they're just like you know digital pictures. No, or you whatnot. get solos. You get yeah right. with mine. Right with mm -hmm. yours. So if you're delivering, and if you're actually you know following through on those deliverables, that's what makes I them am. valuable. And I think that's where. <laughs> People either succeed in that or they yeah. don't, you know? I mean, it is hard. Like we said, it is hard to constantly put out content. But the, I, I promised them that I would. And it's no different than me shooting just one extra solo mm -hmm. each time I do all my other stuff. So, yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's true. It's like if you're already producing a large amount of Just throw content. one extra one in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to foresee myself to kind of – stay relevant you know <laughs> yeah and stay like committed yeah yeah I mean that's a that's definitely a commitment that you're that you're... I like to work though yeah have you always been like a workaholic definitely definitely since like 14 I had a job yeah I'm kind mm -hmm. of the same do you find that it's difficult to strike that work life balance I know that you said earlier in your career you were just working all the time you took no time for yourself then you took that year off yeah had the best time in your life now you're back. Do you find yourself in a place where you're able to to balance those two things better or you still struggle with that? No, I definitely I've tried to balance. And I think I'm just the type of person that I rather go really hard for six months of working and then three months just do whatever I want. Yeah, I think that that makes me the happiest because I don't think taking off every Saturday and Sunday to go out is going to like I just feel like. I'd rather feel like crap all at once for a couple of months than like one day every week. It just makes more sense to me. I know what you mean. I mean, I sometimes, 
I feel like I need to get the bulk of work out of way before I can relax because otherwise I spend that relaxing time thinking about exactly. all the work I still have to do. It's and then miserable. I can't relax. It's miserable. Like living in the future. On I try to take Saturdays and Sundays off and not do anything, and I'm like on Saturday, I'm like Monday, I'm gonna <laughs> do all these things and even clean and do laundry and so yeah, no, yeah. No thanks. <laughs> Now, you also started a podcast this year um, about sex, love, dating, and relationships. What prompted that idea? Um, I mean, I've been in so many different relationships, like literally every single kind. And people would always ask me. My friends always come to me for advice. And then people online were asking me questions. And I started doing a Twitter space just about relationships. And people really liked it. So then I was like, okay, I'll just do a podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. And I and and it's my my um, friend. He's he's gay and a guy, so it we have like everything. If that yeah. makes sense, like, like a every really great opinion. dynamic. Yeah. yeah, that's uh James Moss, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how, how did you two connect? He is my friend Holly, her Holly Rupert. Mm-hmm. Her <laughs> to clarify, <laughs> I know. Every every time I say Holly, they're like Holly Randall. Yeah, and you can't say Holly R. Yeah, we both start with, so Holly Rupert works at Playboy, by the way. Yes. Um, that's what would you shoot about. for Playboy? So everyone always would get it confused. I can't tell you how many times people have texted me or called the, me yeah. thinking I was Holly Rupert. Yeah. And yeah. Like, this is the wrong Holly. <laughs> so I met, they lived in the same apartment building mm-hmm. and I'm at her place probably every day. So <laughs> so that's how you guys met. Yeah. So um, how many episodes have you guys done so far? Um... Probably well, we had to scrap a lot, so I'm not sure which ones will come out, and um, so I need to actually look through all of them. Why so, did you have to scrap them? Well, because I was dating someone, and then and then it kind of blew up. So then I, all the episodes were about me being in a relationship with him, which is fine, because it, but I, it doesn't make sense. You gotcha. know, so yes, I, I lived in Minnesota, so he would fly and he we would spend a couple of days together, but we would shoot them, you know, yeah, almost yeah, two, three a day. So it just didn't, we got to get rid of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I, you know, what I have the same situation where I mean, obviously I'm interviewing people for my podcast, but I can't get too far ahead yeah, because no. by the time that episode comes out things that they spoke about may no longer be relevant. Exist, yeah. I mean, I've definitely, like, done podcasts where I've interviewed, like, couples, and then, mm-hmm. like, they They're not break together. up. And yeah. I'm like, I guess it's we got to take this out. <laughs> yeah, so we had to scrap a lot. So I'm not really sure. Probably tomorrow we'll work on one mm-hmm. and kind of see where we're at. So do you guys take questions from people and then you answer them? Kind yeah. Kind of like a Dear Abby? Yes, exactly like that. So, yep, yeah, we just ask people to... We put a tweet out. People ask the questions. It's all about how um, a lot of questions are about do, does size matter, right? That's the number I one question. I was just going to ask you what the number one question um, was. Does size matter? Um, and I guess uh, it's something that you guys could both answer. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So, um, And then a lot of them is actually about cheating. They're all mm. about people handling cheating, which I think is very interesting. But I think that's just – everyone's main focus, unfortunately, in a relationship is whether someone's cheating or not. Mm -hmm. It's it's sad. Yeah. I think the um, does size matter question is probably more, comes more from the single guys, and then Mm -hmm. the cheating comes from the people in the relationship. Or how do they meet someone? They're Mm -hmm. shy. That's a very popular one. Um, Hygiene. There's a lot about hygiene. Mm -hmm. How do I tell my girl that her breath stinks or she stinks down there? And there's a Mm -hmm. lot of hygiene. So, does size matter? I personally prefer someone that's bigger, but it doesn't matter. But I can't be with someone that has a smaller dick that doesn't know how to give head. Mm. You have to make up for it orally. Have okay. to. Gotcha. Because I really do. I, I prefer bigger. That's okay. You know what? I mean, that's that's good to be honest i have to say that most of the girls i speak to say that they generally prefer like an average a smaller it does average hurt size. if it's too big and you know i rather have i rather have smaller than a giant one mm-hmm. that's not does nothing for me 
What's your so like? What's the ideal size? I would say an eight, a an solid eight. eight, a solid eight. Yeah, so I mean that's 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 a pretty decent size. A solid eight. Because <laughs> <laughs> guys usually suck at head, so I just rather yeah not even mess with that, not even try to teach them none of it. It just takes too much. I rather just be pleased with something they already naturally have. Okay, so let's say I'm a guy and I'm, I don't have an eight incher, yeah. but I really want to you know, make you happy. How, how do I get better at head? I, you have to listen to what the girl is saying. You have to make the girl feel comfortable enough to tell you what she wants. And I think it's really important for a guy to be like, tell me what you want. Tell me if you like it. Like be the person to open that part up and then actually listen to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all about communication. Like, does this feel good? And, and the girl saying, yes, it does. Or Mm -hmm. I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. And pay attention yeah. don't get so crazy into it that you you know can't even listen to what she's saying and another th- fuck up that I think guys do is when the girl's coming they automatically are like let me just go even harder yeah you're you're you need to stay whatever you're doing needs to stay yeah that's how you got done. her there in the first yes. place don't just start going crazy yeah yeah you know what I mean like I know all the, exactly what you and mean. then it's like oh you just ruined it <laughs> <laughs> But you can't say that. I know. It's so, I mean, it's hard to communicate what you like sexually because, you know, I think that it it is probably easier for people like you and me at Mm -hmm. this point in our lives because we work in the adult industry and there's so much communication in the adult industry. That's like what it's all about because it's a job. But, you know, in real life, the movies have sold us this idea that you're just magically attuned to each other mm. and like everything works out and like he knows exactly what you want and yeah. you orgasm at the same time. And, and they in that in that things don't really change. Like you can like something and then be mm-hmm. like, I do not like this at all anymore. Yeah. What and is yeah. one thing that you used to like that you don't like anymore? Or vice versa? Um, well, I used to hate anal. I love anal now. Really? Yeah. How I, do you think that came about? Um, I don't know. Just one day I started doing it more and more. I think what I did is I gradually got into it. I was with someone that really liked it. So there was time I would wear a butt plug during sex and everything. And then I just, we just started having anal sex frequently. Like it was like almost like an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's so different than porn anal because mm-hmm. you don't have to clean out or anything because I'm not going that aggressively yeah so but You're yes also not putting it on camera or I yeah you are <laughs> no no I wasn't so yeah. yeah anal is what I but I don't think I would have anal sex with just anyone I think it would have I would it would have to be something with someone long term yeah like I would never have a one night anal stand. no <laughs> no that's crazy right I know I, people do it but I mean you you've know. done it yeah you got, no way no way I have back in my wild days there was actually one guy that um I was seeing very casually uh who it's funny because he watches this podcast so he's totally <laughs> gonna hear it um that my friend uh, nicknamed anal hurricane and we used to like to have anal sex all the time but it was he he knew what he was doing yeah and it was it was good I felt comfortable with him yeah you know but yeah, no, it, it's not something I think that you do with just anyone. No, but I I've, don't I've think I could. But I've done it a couple of times. I've first. thought about it. I've been really into people before where I'm like, I could maybe let them. But mm-hmm. it's still also, that's a very unpredictable. Yes. Y- you know, yes. It's very... yes. There's always like at the end when you like look down when he pulls out, you're like, oh. Or you just, like, put your hand there. To, in like, a night of God. drinking? Oh. oh, no. It can go so horribly wrong. Yeah. But, no, I've had horrible situations before. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So they know what they're getting themselves into. You can't have anal sex and not expect. I know. You know it to be. Is there to be bears in the cave? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so nasty. I mean, uh, it is, but it's like you want to go down there, you know. For some reason, guys are so like i don't want to have sex on a period you're on your period but they will have no problem that's, having dirty anal sex dude that's true you know i never thought about that they never complain yeah or they'll be like it's okay we'll just quit get in the shower i've never had a guy react badly but period sex such yeah. a problem let's put a towel down they never put a towel down for anal <laughs> you know <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, and let me tell you, poop's a lot harder to get yeah, out. Yeah, it is. I have, a, I have a toddler. I can yeah. tell you something. Just getting poop out of stuff is yes. not easy. Yes, and grown ones too. Yeah, yeah, you're dealing with a larger quantity. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. <laughs> um, what is your some of your most like surprising questions that you've had on your podcast? Um. I've had really surprising stories, uh, like one guy wanting to expose his girlfriend cheating on him in front of her family, mm -hmm. and he wanted advice on like how to do it, and I said don't do it because her parents love her no matter what. Her parents are going to be like, okay, she cheated, but this is our daughter. Like, what are you, you Yeah, know? it just makes you look like the asshole. That was surprising. One of them was um, a lot of best friends wanting to be with either their best friend's ex or boyfriend which I think is so surprising. I've never wanted to be with my friend's boyfriend or ex. Like yeah. that's just such a such a boundary that you don't cross. Right. Um, one of them was a mother <laughs> fuck the this the boyfriend mm -hmm. for daughter in that they wanted to actually be together and they didn't know how to tell the daughter. Or no, I'm sorry, they didn't want to be together. The the boyfriend wanted to get back with the daughter and he wasn't sure if he should say something or not. Oh my God, that's like a Brazzers scene right I there. know, I know. I mean. But that's real life stuff. Yeah. People actually do that, I'm surprised. Art imitates life, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Oof. That is. Not, yeah. That is. Not cool. Uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that we didn't get into last time you were on the show is your childhood and your relationships with your parents. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you had a little bit of like a rocky childhood. Yeah, is that for sure. Right? Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so my parents got divorced when I was seven, I think. Mm -hmm. So very young. Yeah. Um, but my dad, I mean, I guess I was seven. So I don't remember him being around that much regardless. Um, he is an alcoholic, pretty bad. I'm not sure if he still is, but um, my mom moved us back to Ohio. I have two sisters, I'm a middle child. Um, and I I mean, my we were very poor. It was just me and my, my mom and my sisters and my grandparents didn't really work. Um, they were older, you mm -hmm. know, so and my dad didn't give any child support or anything like that. Um, so I worked very young and I finished high school actually at 16 because oh, wow. I needed to work. And then I started stripping um, underage, actually. Oh, wow. And then I got into porn at 18. OK. And but my relationship with I talked to my mom almost every day. Mm -hmm. So I still talk to her very frequently, but it's very, uh, I, don't talk, I don't talk to her about like porn, right. you know, like, um, yeah. you know, or like my only fans or if yeah. I'm doing something that I think she would like, I will definitely tell her, but I keep that very separate and she's never asked. She's never brought it up. It's never been a conversation with my family about my job. Yeah. I think, I mean, from the other interviews that I've done with performers, you know, if their parents accept what they do for a living, they generally don't come home and tell them the details of like their anal scene. No. Like they know and they accept it, but I don't think any parent ever wants to hear like details about, you know, sex I that wouldn't. their child has, like regard regardless of whether or not they accept the job. Yeah, I mean, same oh here. Oh my gosh. My mom, one time I wrote a note when I lost my virginity and I wrote like, I'm a, like, I love to journal. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a note about what had happened and, and my mom wrote a note back and said, it's okay, you know, you know, everything's okay, whatever. I'm not upset or anything. So wait, and you I was wrote like, your mom I wrote, no, I wrote a note and my mom was cleaning my bedroom. Did your mom ever go in and clean your room for you? Fuck no. Oh, okay, my mom did. <laughs> my mom did, and she found the note. She wrote back to the note, very positive. It's okay, you know. This that's what that's life, you know, stuff like that. And um, and I was mortified that she knew that I had sex. So I can't imagine talking to her about me shooting porn. Yeah. Or my grandparents. I don't even talk to my siblings about it. It's really? just not a. Well, I mean, there had to be a moment when you told them what you were doing for a living or no. they found out. Yeah, they found out, but I was already moved out. I lived by myself around 16. So by the time, that's two years later where I was already on my own. My mom couldn't really say anything. But how did the like acknowledgement that she knew come about? My sister's... I think they told me that she knew. I don't know how she found out. Probably other family members. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I know at the very beginning, this is so sick, but one of my uncles commented on a my first scene on Pornhub, of and I think that's did. I yeah. I feel like this happens more often than once. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and so that I there's think, always that uncle. <laughs> yeah, that I think that set my aunt off, and she I think she was the one that maybe exposed everything. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Yeah, but. Yeah, they so, found out quick. Did you ever have a conversation with your mom about it? No. Wow. Never. Still to this day. Never. I don't think what, we ever would. What did she tell people? Did she just say my daughter's an, a model? I don't know. I don't know what she says to people. It's never talked about. It's. So it, when you talk to her on the phone, do you ever say like, I mean, not speak in detail explicitly about your scenes, but like, you know, work is work is stressful or no. like had a hard day at work or so, or I mm. had this I did it, signed a new contract like no you know, just in vague no 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 we talk about everything but that unless I'm doing something that's not porn then I tell her yeah so like yeah. maybe when you when you did playboy yes you guys yeah she about knows that. that yeah but even then that wasn't talked about much mm. yeah no we have very I mean it's but it's usually my mom doing all the talking. You know how moms are. Oh, okay. You know, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or we'll talk about my family or, yeah, everything but work, which is kind of refreshing. Yeah. Now, that's got, it's actually got to be nice to have that separation. Yeah. So you're close with your family? I am close with my mom and my younger sister. Okay. My older sister, my mom, um, my mom is, well, she's, I think she's schizophrenic, but she could just be bipolar severely bipolar okay and my older sister also has that so she's still very much struggling so she she has to be at a distance from everyone but my little sister is I talk to her every day too I'm sorry that's a struggle yeah I mean but I really thought about it and there's a lot of people who are bipolar so it's kind of a normal thing now which is interesting because more and more there's people with mental illness so i don't know if it's the food or if it's is it that is it or are we finally acknowledging could be that there's mental illness and we're talking about it i think so i mean you're allowed to say this person needs a heart transplant they need this they need that Mm -hmm. but you're not allowed to say this person was born with a bad brain like there's people who are truly born where they need extra help just like people need extra help and with glasses. I, I honestly think it's all the same. I yeah. really do. I agree with you. And as somebody who struggled with alcoholism, you know, I mean, I think I never really felt like compassion towards people who had mental health issues mm-hmm. until like I really came face to face with my yeah. own. Um, and, you know, existing in that time where I literally like my mind would take over like what my body was doing. Like it's I so wanted easy. to stop drinking. Like, trust me, I wanted to. And I kept trying to talk myself out of it. And then I found myself, like, literally unable to, like, control my actions, which is a very bizarre experience and very, very scary. Mm -hmm. And now being on the other side of that, you know, I don't have – I feel actually fortunate enough that I don't have any other, like, mental health issues. I don't have ADHD. I'm Mm -hmm. not bipolar. I don't have, like, any of these other things. Like, literally, I'm the kind of person, as as long as I don't take something, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, I don't need to take anything. But, um, you know – being on that side of it and then seeing people have other mental health struggles. Like it's, it's tough. It's the brain is like such a powerful thing. It is. And it's so easy to, for it to take over and people don't really realize that. I think a lot of people, I think majority of people are very strong people, but the brain can really take over. I know I have to really watch myself when Mm -hmm. I'm going through something, even if it's not that serious. I have to be so, but I also grew up in a household where mental illness was like such a thing to pay attention for. I mean, I, I've watched my, like in therapy, I've like, been through all of the testing and everything just to make sure I didn't have anything and you usually know it until you're about 26 whether you mm-hmm. have something right. so I'm finally at that like thing where oh, I don't have you know yeah. but I was so cautious and now when I'm depressed or whatever even just sad in the slightest I'm like I gotta get outside I gotta you know go to, I, I even rely on my friends I'm like I 
right now I need you guys to get me out of the house. And my friends are very good about that, but I think people don't aren't taught that. Mm -hmm. They're taught, if you're sad, well, then it's okay to lay in bed. Mm -hmm. And it kind of is, but you the brain will really take over. It's really crazy, yeah, and like depression, how it really just – like the feeling of hopelessness. It can I mean, take one heavy. day. It can take one day of like yeah. a really bad day to to set you back years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's really great that you have friends that yeah. you can, you know, rely upon because I think, you know, going back to the stigma thing, people feel like they shouldn't talk about it. So yeah. they shouldn't reach out for help. And then you just get deeper and deeper into mm-hmm. that. And then it just becomes more and more dangerous. Absolutely. I mean, they make stuff so expensive too. Therapy, yeah. hundreds of dollars, a session, medication, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I, there's a lot that needs to be fixed. Yeah. But it, it's, I think we're actually getting there. Yeah. I plan to do a lot of um, charities and, and get really involved in mental health stuff. So I'm interested to kind of see more where it goes with people who are struggling and if there is going to be more resources for people. Yeah. I mean, I think think that's ultimately like we can't ignore that any longer, Mm -mm. you know, and they talk about the homelessness problem here in Los Angeles. I think it's like half or 40% or half people are struggling with mental illness. That's why they're homeless. It's not because they're lazy. No, it's not because they don't want to work. I'm actually surprised. It's, it's, I would say more. Yeah. It's, it's probably hard to judge these things through statistics because I think getting probably just being able to interview people or assess um, homeless people, like all yeah. of them, that's probably difficult to do. So arriving at a, you know, accurate um, statistic is probably difficult. A lot of the times, too, um, people don't remember when they're, when they're having episodes. or So mm-hmm. it's hard for them to even know to go get help. Mm-hmm. You know, so it might be that people – who are homeless are not remembering these episodes or even getting them to the point where they're homeless. Yeah. To even kind of go back and be like, man, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. 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 Sad. Yeah, it really is. Um, Is there a moment that you would define as your career high so far? No. I actually genuinely think that I am on a really good path to, I think I'm getting close to that, but I, I don't think that, I'm there yet. Hmm. I think that I'm really getting close to better things for myself, just all over. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I felt there's been times where I felt really happy and I've gotten really far. Uh, I, when I got my flashlight, that was really exciting and yeah. that was a goal yeah. for sure. Do you have any other big goals that you haven't hit yet? Um, so I have yes and no. I'm not going to say what magazine, but I'm shooting for one of the top magazines and that has been a goal for me um but it comes out in a couple of months so okay yeah Yeah, so you can tell me but still it's it's that's like a huge accomplishment for me like I have these long you know hopefully in five years from now I'm have an actual business with like you know I don't know what yet but I want to have an actual business Mm -hmm. any idea in terms of like any idea? I want to do look? hair extensions. I okay. love blonde hair extensions, and there's not good ones. And blonde is so in. Mm-hmm. I really feel like if I found a good quality manufacturer, I could. Okay. So you want to get into like products? Products, yeah. Okay. I think so. I'm not even thinking like that that much about it, mm-hmm. but it is a goal for me to own a business. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would argue that you own one now. I want like a. You know, do you want like a brick and mortar business? Yes, okay. I want like an actual where I go in somewhere and you know there's a building and everything. Yeah, With yeah, no, I see clo- that. I don't know With something. Elsa Jean yeah, on the, on the front. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it will happen. <laughs> you know, you've got you've got the fucking world in front of you. You feel like you've accomplished all your goals? Are you? <sighs> yes. Let's make this about me. Um, (laughs) uh, no, well, yes and no. I mean, I, it is funny. You probably, it sounds to me that you and I are similar in a lot of ways. When you talked about being like a workaholic, Mm -hmm. you're probably a bit of a perfectionist too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the double-edged sword with that is, um, 
that you work really hard at making things like kind of perfect and you work mm-hmm. really hard to be to achieve a certain thing but when yeah. you achieve that certain thing it's like not enough is it it's not you always you're like oh there could be something more that's like the double edged sword it's like you work really hard to get somewhere but then when you get there it's like it's not good enough and you almost don't enjoy that thing because you're looking to the next thing well you know what it is actually it's that that it's relief that you're getting because you're so anxious for it and then you're like am I actually going to get to it and then when you finally do it's actually relief it's not actually like I accomplished something Mm -hmm. so that's where you know it gets a little bit tricky like they say when athletes are playing that it's they don't feel that like oh this is so great it's they feel this huge relief because they've been trying to get there and then they finally do and I think that's the same with goals at least I feel like that but I kind of started this year to celebrate my accomplishments Mm -hmm. even if I don't necessarily feel like it Mm -hmm. because I was just uh, like getting my goals done and then I'm like oh whatever and then you know yeah it was just because if you don't enjoy it then like what are we doing yeah why did I even do it yeah exactly gotta celebrate it yeah I mean I I do definitely take moments where I sit back and I reflect on like the things I've accomplished Mm -hmm. and I think about how I would have felt about those things if I imagined myself in the place I am now like five years ago ten years ago I would have been so stoked Right. And now I'm in that place. I'm like, why do I not feel the way I thought I would feel when I looked at that goal five years ago? Life like, just moves so fast, too. So you almost don't even have time. It's like people are like, okay, what next can we do? You know, yeah. and what, uh, you know, yeah. I just bought this house, but now let me try to get a bigger one. And, yeah. you know, yeah. just never pleased. Yeah. I think, I think that's why you got to stay off of social media, too. I think it has a lot to do with, yes, with, maybe feeling like you didn't succeed. Yeah, there was definitely like a time when I would scroll through Instagram and I would see all of these other people getting like these accolades and winning these awards that I wasn't winning. And I was like, why are not, am I not that Did person? you really feel affected by that? Yeah. Really? For sure. Like I remember seeing, you know, people like went like directors winning awards and stuff like that and like that I had never gotten. And I was like, why? And But then I would step back and be like, wait a minute, like, I am directing, I'm producing good yes. material, I think. Like, so what, I didn't win an Avian Award. But I, I also, like, have a podcast. I also am doing this. I'm doing, mm-hmm. like, ten other things that and this have... person is actually not doing yeah. as well. They're just doing the one thing. I'm doing, like, five things. So, like, why can I, I not be like, oh, wow, you're actually doing pretty well with the five things that you're doing, you know? And, honestly, your reputation has always been good. You don't have a reputation of someone that keeps people on set for 20 hours. and You know what I mean? But that, oh, Yes, those, I do know exactly the, what you mean. It, you know, those people really pay attention to that. They really do. Yeah. I mean, I know that I did. I was like, I don't want to be on any of these sets no. regardless of awards or whatever. Yeah. And That's the thing. Know. I don't – see, <laughs> I think that that is maybe what separates me from a lot of other directors, except for Mike Quasar, because he feels me on this and he does much better than I do on this. Is I don't want to be on set all day either. No. I don't want to be on set for 20 hours. I want to go home. I think people are really surprised. They're going to be surprised to hear that because I remember one time I got to set at 2 p.m. I didn't leave until 8 in the morning and that was like for browsers or something like that. It wasn't even for like, you know, like the wicked ones where they do these special effects. It was just a standard scene and I was like, livid I was like don't ever have me like we're not I'm not here to hang out yeah at all is that what it felt like just you know how it is just like things could be so sl- yeah people want to hang out I yeah. feel like I want to get in the makeup chair no go straight into pictures go straight to dialogue scene be done go yeah. home yeah um and I also don't feel like people really pay attention to the scenes or not the scenes the the dialogue and whatever so I felt like very against mm-hmm spending 10 hours on that yeah the scene alone itself is what an hour max. i know i know that's what and it takes so much longer to do the dialogue than everything else i, I don't think exactly. people don't realize it how long it truly takes it really does yeah i think about um you know and i always tried so hard to run an efficient set and you know when i was doing those big wicked features oh, i you would, did them oh yeah oh my gosh i did a few the, my longest day was 18 hours yeah see and i i I look back on it now and like, look, I'm grateful that I did those movies. It was a good experience for me. It was a really Mm -hmm. good learning experience. I got to write them. Like Steve Ornstein gave me quite a bit of freedom. Um, Didn't give me the best budget, but it's okay. Right. Um, (laughs) Which is why the days took so long, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But so I'm grateful for those experiences. But I, 
I just think now and I think about like how long I spent doing it, how many hours and how like little I was paid and I Crazy. don't have any residuals. I don't own the content in any way and I'm just like It's crazy. Why? Why did I slave away to produce these I movies mean, and not have like any I don't know. I just That's like where- OnlyFans has really saved yeah. the industry. And I know it's probably, you know, I've been out of the loop, but I know it's from what it seemed like on Twitter. They seem very, the industry seems a little bit frustrated trying to get girls on set. Yeah. But it, you make triple, sometimes more, the amount in yeah. a day. And you're you, you're sitting at home, yeah. you know, not I know going to set. You actually lose money at this point being on set. Yeah. That's like, a true statement. You yeah. girls are losing money. Yeah. So either they're going because they want to, you know, put their name out there. Or they want to actually like, hang you know, out. They want to be some of those or, or people they, that love yeah. being on set. And, there are people that love being on set, love being in productions. And I mm-hmm. and I get that. And that, like, obviously. Very that's, creative. And, that's a positive thing. And I always felt, because I know a lot of producers complained about it, but I kind of liked the shift that, like, OnlyFans brought because – I only want to work with people who also want to be on set too. Absolutely. I don't really want to work with people who don't want to be there. No, and now, no, those days of you don't have to be there if you don't want to. And I think that's better for everybody. Yeah, I remember days where it was like the energy could just, you know, if someone doesn't want to be there, it brings down the whole energy of the room. Yeah, yeah. I always, I always had a good time on set, even though some of the days were long. I really had a good time Mm -hmm. filming even though I kind of didn't want to be there I still you know I still actually genuinely had yeah a good time yeah I Uh, do yeah I think about those long days and like they ended up being fun and I had fun (laughs) like some of my best memories are from those days yeah you know it also helps to I think in in porn specifically because I know a lot of people that work in mainstream they don't have the same crew all the time Mm. they always work with different people so you don't really get to build that camaraderie like you do in porn. Yeah. Like in porn, like directors, like we work with the same people all the time. Everyone's friends. Have, and so we're like friends. Yeah. So it's, I think that helps a lot. I, I really, sometimes I really wonder where the industry will go. Yeah. When it comes to, I think it will be all at home. Think so? I think, yeah. I think people are going to all, because I know I <clears throat> hire people to come and shoot almost the same quality I was putting out when I was working for companies. Mm -hmm. I know how to make it look the same, you know? So you hire um, the right people and you can get that. So I don't know. Are companies going to survive after a while? I mean, you know what's ironic is that um, a lot of the brands that I worked for actually gave me bigger budgets. Oh, so maybe the smaller. Maybe OnlyFans has helped where where people are like so obsessed with porn that they can't even get enough on OnlyFans <laughs> and they're like, "Now let me go." You know, maybe that seriously I think also too a lot of the smaller companies have died off and it's only kind of really? left the bigger companies. Like is Team Skeet still around? Uh, actually, yes, I believe so, but oh. I don't know how much they're shooting. Yeah, see that was like I remember a smaller one. Yeah. Or like New Sensations. New Sensations, I think, is still around. Is that considered a bigger company, maybe? Not really, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of them, though, too, have been bought out by yeah. the bigger corporations. So and maybe that's what it is, is they're all monopolizing it, yeah, and, exactly. and, and, yeah. which is actually, isn't that supposed to be illegal? Yeah. <laughs> but the thing Everything is... Everything goes in porn, though. But also, too, a lot of these companies um, are in Montreal, so they're not Wait. in the U.S. Oh, true. So they're not, they don't need to right. follow U.S. laws. Adult Time, Montreal, right? Mm-hmm. Mind Geek, Montreal. Yeah. Mile High, Montreal. Yeah. Many of Watch that Montreal. all be owned by, and no one truly knows, but watch that all, the whole industry is just owned by one person. By, one, by one, like, evil like, genius yeah. in Montreal. Making people <laughs> think that there's all these different companies when it's really just um, smart. I yeah. wish I thought about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you have any regrets from your time in the adult industry? Um, no. Hmm. I really don't even regret the way I retired. Yeah. Um, well, because you said it was I, a blessing in disguise. Yeah, I've just every. Yeah, I don't. I can't really think of like a regret in general in my life. Um, I definitely there's times where I'm like. If I could redo it, I wouldn't do it again. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily a regret. It's not like 
Because you learned something from it? Yeah, maybe? yeah, definitely. I had a good time in the industry. I really did. I there is I was overworked, but I had a really good time. And I had a great agent, too. You and did. I, I really, did. Mark, I was really Mark looked after. Great. And ex- and he was already, a, is already a good agent. And he really looked after me extra. Mm-hmm. So I was very, I was like a, almost like a princess. Like it was like anything I really yeah. wanted or, you know, yeah. I could always pick my talents and stuff like that. Like yeah. I, And to be clear, because I feel like when I say Mark, people think I mean Mark Spiegler. It's Mark, Mark Schechter, Schechter at Schechter, ATM yeah. LA. Yes, that was my agent. I He was such a good agent. Yeah, he's actually he, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Like if in terms of like agents, he's definitely one of the ones I yeah. recommend. I'm like, if you want someone who's kind and mm-hmm. like isn't going to, like try to shice you like he's he's a good guy I think if I had a regret it would be it would have been how many scenes I put out I think Mm. if I would have cut them in half I would have been less overworked and I might still be in but also Mm -hmm. I'm happy I'm out of the industry I'm not sure so no I don't have any regrets do you think you would ever shoot again for a brand no Mm. never I still have that like anger towards the testing I do yeah no I understand Uh, even if it was a company that paid me ridiculous Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't do it you just feel betrayed absolutely yeah that's hard I mean you put your trust in these people to like take care of your health and they knowingly violated it that's hard to get over it is and especially it's at the time was the top company to work for. So I was like, I don't know where else to go from here. If yeah. they're do if you're doing this You're then, gonna lie to me. Yeah. Then like yeah. Yeah, no. No. What if it was like something way worse and <sighs> Yeah. And it risked my life, you know? Yeah. That's really how I saw it. I'm yeah. I'm actually a very dramatic person. So <laughs> I take <laughs> whatever happens to me, it's affecting me ten times harder than you know what yeah. I mean? But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to new performers? Um, you're not there to make friends. Oh, okay. You're not there to make friends. Treat it as a job. Be professional. Be on time. Be, you know, in every way professional. And you're not there to make friends. Interesting. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, yeah, about the professional and being on time yes. part. Oh, for yes. For fucking sure. I say you're not... It, you, it's so easy in every industry to make bad friends and that could really ruin your life. Yeah. You're not there to date. You're not, make your friends outside of the industry. Yeah. And then when you have like a stable, um, you know, career, then start being friends with people because you're already stable. You're already, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. no friends. No. No friends. No friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of callous what you're saying, but I under I understand what you mean. I don't I have very few close friends yeah. in the adult industry. I could literally count them like on one Me hand. Me too. And mine are really good. I I really love my my you know, adult talent friends, but I waited to be friends with them. I really mm-hmm. kept to myself and I think that's why I did so well. Mm-hmm. Cuz I saved mm-hmm. and I kept to myself. Mm-hmm. That's another thing is save your money. Yeah. Please. Yes. But I was a stripper before and I spent all my stripping money. So by the time I got in, I was like, okay, I need to save. I have nothing. <laughs> so I already, you know. Do you have like a financial advisor? Uh, no, I do. Oh, well, I have someone that does my investments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Mm-hmm. And then the mm-hmm. rest you just save. Yeah. I get the same satisfaction as, sp- like, you know how some people love to spend? I feel just as good if I see my savings go up I really do it's it's a great feeling when I log in every month and I'm like oh it's you know (laughs) (laughs) do you ever feel like not that you save too much but do you ever think like you know my god what am I what am I saving all of this for like I can spend a little bit of it yes absolutely and I kind of noticed that because so many people ask me for money to where I'm like I almost started getting bitter. I'm like, I'm not even spending my own money to the point where people are like, they want it, you know? The more money you make, the more problems you really have. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I I started spending my money a lot more recently um, just to enjoy it. Do you find that you're the person that when you go out to dinner with a group of people, people just expect you to pay? Every time. Oh, that's annoying. Every time. And I also liked, I'm very... I like to eat at nice places and mm-hmm. I know my friends can't necessarily afford it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just 
pay because I want to go there. You yeah. know, it's hard. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense, especially if like you suggest a place and you invite people. Yeah. I can't out. say that everyone makes... come to Nobu and yeah. then I know everyone can't necessarily afford it. And there's other cheaper sushi places, yeah. but I am insistent. <laughs> oh, no yeah that's fair enough that's fair enough <laughs> but I do end up paying a lot which is fine I actually don't mind it too much yeah you know your love language um that's a good question uh my husband and I talked about this a while ago what are what are there's four of them right it's gift giving because I think how I show love is to pay for things and give people gifts that's okay. why I was asking Gift giving, quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch. Um, I think it's is, is that it? Four? it? I think quality it's... time, words of affirmation, physical touch, gift giving. Maybe yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it's yeah. four, or is it five? Why do or, I feel like there's one more? There that's might be like, one more. Um, I think that's it. Hey, Masha, can you look up the love languages? Are there four or five? time gift acts of service acts of service yes okay that's a good question so i think that words of f she says there's five is acts of service one of them Mm -hmm. it is yes okay it's number two okay yeah all right um i think yeah probably acts of service Mm -hmm. um can you have more than one yeah, mine's are mine is um, words of affirmation and quality time. Okay, yeah, mine. But it kind of goes hand in hand a little bit. Yeah, like you don't spend time with someone with. I guess you could not talk. I don't know. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I think it's words of affirmation is like I love you. Yes, or, like, you're or special I'm proud to me. of you. Proud you're of doing you. good. Yeah. yeah, I think for me, words of affirmation because I do tell my husband that a lot. Like randomly, yeah. I'll tell him that I love him. That's good. And that's really, that's actually kind of hard to do. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I like, I just want to make sure he knows, you know? Yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> um, And then uh, I think probably acts of, serv- acts of service, because I do like a that's lot what of- you, ha- That's how you show your love or that's how you like to be No, loved? that's how I, I think, I think that's how I show my love. Because I do like a lot of stuff for my mom. Yeah. You know, yeah, like take care good. of her and stuff like that. And like took care of my dad towards the end of his mm. life. Um, and then yeah, I'm like gift giving. I'm yeah, like peop- do I buy people stuff? I mean, I I'm really good at like gift giving around Christmas and birthdays, but I don't generally buy. I'm people such stuff a gift randomly. giver. I really am. I absolutely I love giving people gifts, and then like my friends have even cried before, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it just made me feel so. Yeah. You know, I'm the same. I, I love giving gifts and I like literally don't care about getting them. Like oh, when I, Christmas comes around, I'm so excited to give you a present. Yeah. But I don't actually, I'm almost like disappointed when people give me a gift. I'm like, I, hey, they don't really need anything. I didn't receive one gift for Christmas. No, nothing for my birthday. I make it a huge point. I actually am kind of against it. I think that really, it, yes. You tell people think, not to give you anything? Yes. I think that it's kind of like, gift giving is especially when it comes around holidays it's just for the government to make money just to force everyone to spend a bunch of money I don't think it really matters what you receive I think that it just is a way for people to spend so much money that get everybody back in the black again um so wait do you give gifts I give yes I'm a big I know so you go so, against your own I go advice against exactly so you're a hypocrite what, I am 100 <laughs> percent. I am one of the biggest hypocrites but I think buying bulk like you know, random um, dumb shit. Yeah. Like I think going and me buying, if I had children or someone 20 gifts, I mm-hmm. think that that's just, I yeah. don't think it, I think it's a scam. I do. No, I agree actually. And I, I, my, my husband buys my daughter stuff like a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, Come on, dude. Like she has so much shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, she's too young to like know any better, but literally at Christmas and birthday, I took like half of her gifts and I gave them away. I was you like, should. you don't need all this shit. Like you, you don't need all this shit. You're fucking spoiled. Yeah. You don't need this stuff. There's people who need this. I'm like gonna, yeah. you know, like I hide them from her. So she like forgets that they're not there. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously the thing she really wants. I let yeah, her have, no, of just, course. They don't really play with just, all their toys. No, they but... don't. And then they lose interest. It's always like, one. There's people out there that need things. So yes. So I'm taking half your gifts and I'm giving That's them good. You should take her with you to go give this off. Or no, is that oh, too soon? Oh, no, at this point too, she would yeah, cry. Yeah, she's like, mine, mine, that- <laughs> mine. Like she doesn't understand. Yeah, no, maybe she's like eight or nine. That's, yeah. you know. Still, I feel like it would be okay, hard maybe, for her then. Yeah. 
<laughs> eventually. Is this going to continue to like sneakily yes, steal? I don't know is. what happened to your Barbie yeah. doll, baby. Randomly, that's I don't when know they where that it went. that one becomes their favorite again or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming. It was such a pleasure Thanks to see you again. Um, I do have a couple of questions for my Patreon members that okay. we'll do in like a little bonus Q&A for them if you're Cute. okay with yeah. that. Yeah, love to. Awesome. Um, where can people find you online if they don't already know? Uh, my Twitter actually changed. So I took the triple X off. It's Elsa Jean is me. So that one. I did makes, notice that. Yeah. I did so notice that. then, and then my, um, my Instagram is Elsa Elsa Jean official. Yes, it is. Yes. I, just and then, you. <laughs> and then, I never really think about what my username is. Um, and then my, that's all I really have social media wise. Mm -hmm. You don't have TikTok? I'm trying. Yes. I don't want to give the TikTok name out yet. I know people are easy. There's just, I need to, I want to put better stuff up there. You, you know what you need your TikTok for is for your podcast. I do. I know. I need it for a lot of stuff like that's Rolling Loud. Well. They were like giving me tickets and they wanted my TikTok. And I'm like, I don't, I don't. I remember when Instagram was like a thing and I refused to have one. People were like, you have to have an Instagram. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, it's how we market I'm gonna our tweet out now. The new TikTok. Okay. Or my TikTok. I just, it's so, I hate doing the dances and whatever. Oh, no, I don't do dances. Are you I don't know what to me? put up there. I just, I want to restart my TikTok. <laughs> just <laughs> clips from your podcast is good. I have yes. like, um, Masha does everything for me. Yeah. She puts up all my stuff. I don't yeah. put anything on TikTok myself. Okay. No, I don't. Maybe I'll get someone to do mine. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> just, you, just honestly, like social media is all about just hire a team that knows what really? they're doing. You just have them do oh, it. Oh, that's scary. You don't have to do any of that shit. That's so scary. Well, yeah. I mean, it is. If it can go so bad. It could. Maybe one day. It has It has almost gone very badly for me. Not with, I know she's here, not with no, Basha. No, I'm sure. But I had another assistant who, um, I mean, to be fair, she didn't know, but I'll tell you after the episode because it's kind of upsetting. Um, but she almost posted something that would have been fucking disastrous. And thank God she ran it past me first. And I was like, do not. Yeah. See, I can't. And I, I hate answering my phone. So if someone's trying to get a hold of me and, you know, oh, my god. The gosh, problem no. is you have to check the work. Yeah. yeah. No. So then I should just get on it and yeah. do it myself. Yeah, just do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There you go. It took a long time to come to that conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys can find me. Um, you can find me on TikTok if I'm still there by the time this episode comes up. I know I say this every time, but they're always threatening to take me away. Um, it's <laughs> at Holly Randall Unfiltered. Um, Instagram is at Holly Randall. So is Twitter. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Or you could actually just go to hollylinks.com and it has... All my social media handles, all of my websites are all there. So, um, yeah, one-stop shop. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.